Oops, you have to put the CD in your computer. Hey everyone, welcome to LEGO Rewind where we're going to do something different today. It's been almost a year since I began this series and a few things have come up since those videos so this is one that needed to be made. Consider this a season 1 finale if you will. Let's begin this year in review. The first episode has surprisingly held up better and worse than most. The old intro was long, the audio wasn't very good, my delivery's kinda bland, and you can tell this is my first go at the format. Even the commercials I show at the end from the time of the theme, I just piled them on with no presentation or backdrop or anything. Yet the script has barely any of the glaring mistakes I've made in some others, and people still really like this one. I guess it was just a good theme to cover. I still hear from people who had no idea this line was a thing being blown away by the colors and vibe of it. There's an illustrated story someone brought to my attention called Ice Titan, a tribute of sorts by Peter Reed and Tim Goddard that depicts the ice planet setting in as realistic a light as they can. And they've released an entire book of similar stories tying many of the old LEGO space themes together in one cohesive narrative. Very inspired. I'll be sure to link their work in the description. This is one of my more contentious videos. In the Life on Mars episode, I was pretty critical of Mars' mission for its lacking story and aesthetic. Some agreed with me, but I really underestimated how much people loved that theme. To be clear, I don't think Mars' mission is bad. The builds themselves are fine. I just prefer themes with a wider palette and a more welcoming atmosphere. That's what made Life on Mars so unique, was the focus on exploration and forming alliances, the colorful Martian culture. Mars' mission is just repetitive to me. I asked if anyone could provide photos of all the Martian docks together with their corresponding mechs, and someone emailed me their own. I was not disappointed with the result. They seem pretty ambivalent about having their username mentioned, so I'll let them keep their anonymity unless they change their mind and ask to be credited in the future. Maniac for Bricks was also kind enough to provide a picture. Someone also said they've been through the exact same story about returning that one Mars mission set that I quickly grew bored with. Small world. A couple of people pointed out to me in Episode 3 that Power Miners did get a proper ending. Sort of. It was a comic in LEGO Magazine that I'd completely forgotten about. Basically, this monster in the Lava Trash set was the one responsible for all the calamities the miners came to stop. Once they imprisoned him, the earthquakes on the surface ceased and their job was done. Seriously? This mook is the final boss of the series? Not something bigger like this with two heads or something? Sure, that was totally the original intention when this theme was conceived. I also talked about the Ninjago movie sets for a bit. I've since gotten the fire mech and it is amazing. The best way I can describe these is they feel more like mocks than official sets. They don't have a lot of the same creative restrictions you usually see, and I was looking forward to a future of more sets like these that push the limit. I was hoping at the time that the Ninjago movie would do well enough that we'd see more movies based on LEGO's original themes, which would lead to better products. I enjoyed the movie. But they did not perform well, and people are skeptical about the LEGO Movie sequel. I could make a whole separate video about how much this situation sucks, but not here. Also, as much as all those big pieces inflated the Rock Raiders' prices, I can't imagine those light-up mining lasers help keep them down. There's a reason we don't see electronics like these much outside of Mindstorms or whatever. So here's an interesting thing that happened recently. Teal came back! Yeah, this color that appeared very prominently in those early episodes is in production again. I remember for years, dark and medium azure were the closest colors we had, and while they were never the best substitutes, there were more than a few cases of people using those for models of Save Tamaru, a character who was lime green and teal back in the day. It's kind of funny to me seeing dark and medium azure and teal elements all together in the same elf set, along with other close colors. There were several reasons they didn't bring it back for so long, chiefly being that it's just a difficult color to keep consistent from batch to batch, and even now they've brought it back they haven't perfected it, and I guess they're worried that kids might get them mixed up with the other colors. I'm just glad it's back. Now if only we could get some teal CCBS pieces, wouldn't that be nice? Along with sand purple, sand red, metallic blue, and metallic green. Yeah, those were cool colors, and they're still in purgatory. Other than that, not much to say about the Technic episode. It's held up pretty well, though I did derail things a couple times. I threw everything into that episode because part of me sincerely thought I might not make any more after that, but it left just enough of an impression, so you know how it goes. Looking back, there isn't much I don't like about the Adventures episode. I was just starting to find my groove with these, but I completely forgot there was a board game that came with the Orient Expedition line. See, the bigger sets came with boards that could be clipped together, and you'd play with cards and dice and move the minifigs around the boards. I had these, but at the time, that I made the episode, I sincerely thought I'd imagined the whole game. I probably still have the board somewhere if they haven't been destroyed by flooding. Also, I called Josh Thunder from Dino Johnny Thunder's son, and in the Dinosaurs episode, I called the guy his nephew. Yeah, it was never made too clear, but he's most likely Johnny's grandson. Hopefully I got that right the third time. Not much to say about studios or alpha team, but the Gallagher episode... 
Oh man, even after I change a thumbnail and add April Fool's special to the title, people still fell for it. The joke is that partway through we cross into an alternate timeline that's pretty depressing. One where Galador was a huge success and killed everything else LEGO was making, and I never fulfilled my dream of releasing Planet Ripple. I had a lot of fun working out the details of this bad future, taking on the persona of this sad alt Nick trying to cope in a world where Galador ate the toy industry and screwed everything up. I guess my acting was good enough that people thought I really believed what I was saying, correcting me about Bionicle being cancelled five years early and being rebooted in 2020. Well, don't worry. I will never toy with your emotions by making another April Fool's video again. Who am I kidding? Of course I will. It was really fun seeing people who got the joke adding to the myth with their own ideas. Exoforce was one of the first cases of something kind of profound happening. People commenting that they went and bought the sets that I talked about after they saw my videos. Oh boy. I don't know if I can be trusted to wield that kind of power responsibly, guys. In all seriousness, it's cool to see this impacting people that way, as long as they don't spend too much money on those old sets. I learned from LJ and a few others that the main reason we rarely see mechs with knees anymore, aside from structural integrity, is because, well, kids don't care about knees. Sure, we like them, but they don't. Not really. So if something like Exoforce was resurrected nowadays, very few if any mechs would have knees. Oh well. And just a reminder, do not make this. You'll just kill three pieces. This is in the instructions. Kids did this, I never got those pieces apart again. I don't know how this slipped past the designers. And I don't know how it slipped past me that the tiny transforming robots I liken to Minicons from Transformers are actually target masters in nature. Speaking of Transformers and Macross, Shoji Kawamori, the creator of the original Optimus Prime toy, or whatever it was called in Diaclone, designed a few of his own alternate Exoforce builds, and the anime influence is clearer than ever. These are just beautiful. Special thanks to the viewer who provided me this information. Links to these models with instructions in the description. I am not a paleontologist, and the dinosaurs episode makes that clear. I made it out like the classic green T-Rex is small, but compared to a minifig, it is the perfect size. It should only be twice as tall as a minifig, though the build could probably be slightly more streamlined and the tail a little higher. Still, good enough. By comparison, the new T-Rex is cartoonishly, freakishly huge. Also, this is not a raptor. I called it a raptor, but it is a Stylophysis. At least I didn't mistake it for a Gallimimus like someone on LEGO did. Also, the earliest LEGO dinosaurs I mentioned were from 1994, but one year before that we saw something similar that isn't a dinosaur, but is pretty close to the body plan of the original T-Rex we know and love. The dragons from 1993's Dragon Knights, so I guess we can add that to the timeline. And yeah, I recognize this dragon, I'd seen it back in the day. I'm sorry I'm so forgetful guys, there's just so much research to wade through with these videos, it's easy to miss stuff like that. Still, this is one of my favorite episodes, and this is the point where LEGO Rewind finally started to blow up, I mean compared to how I was doing before, and I guess I shouldn't be surprised, who doesn't love dinosaurs? I was lucky if any given episode made it above 3, maybe 4,000 views in a month or so. Now people discovering the series through this episode are going back and binging the rest, and it feels like this is starting to pay off. The start of something bigger, maybe. It was also fun hearing from people who weren't aware of Dino Attack being changed to Dino 2010, especially from the European side, who didn't know the more violent American elements were ever a thing. That must have been a trip and a half to discover. Someone also pointed out that the way Mega Constructs, formerly Mega Blocks, designs their Pokemon is exactly how some of us would like LEGO's dinosaurs to be designed. I cannot argue with that. Hate on LEGO's competitors all you want, but now and then, they do one better. And I'd love to see LEGO do this kind of thing. So so yeah, fun episode, totally worth it. Racers was the most nostalgic episode for people, which kind of surprised me because I was sure that would be Exoforce given all the requests to cover it I received since day one. It was amazing just how many commenters had some racer sets of their own growing up. Some even forgot they ever did only to see them appear in the video. It just seemed like a great experience for everybody. And it's exactly the kind of, not just nostalgia, but shared experiences I want to bring back to people. There are little things about all the episodes that bug me. A stray frame here, a bit of audio I had to cut out and re record there, making it sound different. You don't see that many mistakes in the scripts lately because I've been catching myself and leaving those out before I render an episode. It's kind of stressful. The only error in this one is I accidentally said 2000 during the Speed Champions portion when I meant to say and even wrote 2002. Well, on a side note, I learned why so many of LEGO's racers had EXO in the name. It's because they were part of the EXO Force team. Not that one, a racing team. This was the cool thing about the Drone Racers era, was to focus on not just individual racers, but teams of racers competing in one continuous story. If you've ever wondered why Nitro Pulverizer and Nitro Terminator are so similar, well, it's because they're from the same Nitro team, and Hot Scorcher and Hot Buster are probably a similar case, and so on. 
The latest episode is my favorite for a lot of reasons. Being able to open up about my ties to the ocean, getting to talk about several themes I love all at once, taking all the things I'd learned making the other episodes to make something more polished, seeing a response from people pretty similar to that of racers, and throughout the editing process, I quickly began to realize Atlantis is one of the best LEGO themes ever made. Like top 10 for me, maybe 5. The designs are a balance of function, structural integrity, and just looking really cool and unique. It's got a timeless quality, and I see now why people remember it so fondly. Really, this is the reason I make LEGO Rewind, is to make people realize how much they love something they never knew they wanted. Again, people discovering things like Ice Planet for the first time. And now it's happened to me, just from working on these. A couple of people wondered why I didn't cover the underwater bionicle sets from 2007. Well, I was trying to stick to the aesthetic of the five themes Themes I was already covering, and I just didn't know what to say about these ones. I was stumped and didn't think they fit. And for people who want me to make a Bionicle Rewind, how would I even do it? Have they not seen the dozens of Bionicle videos I've already made over the years? How long those tend to be? I'll probably do a Bionicle Rewind someday, as a final episode, maybe. And I won't talk about the story much, I'll focus on the sets, the experience of being there at the time. Otherwise they'll be like an hour long. Still, maybe. Once I've cleared out everything else I want to talk about. Until then, any new Bionicle fans in my audience can go back and watch those. Well, that's everything so far. We've covered Ice Planet 2002, Life on Mars, Mars Mission, Rock Raiders, Power Miners, Star Wars Technic, Slicers, Robo Riders, Competition, Adventures, Pharaoh's Quest, Studios, Sam Raimi Spider-Man sets, Alpha Team, Agents and Ultra Agents, Galador, Exoforce, Duplo, Dinosaurs, Dino Attack, 2010, Dino, Jurassic Park slash World, Race, Racers, Tiny Turbos, World Racers, Speed Champions, Aquazone, Divers, Aqua Raiders, Atlantis, and Deep Sea Explorers. That is just over 30 themes. And that's leaving out the ones I only talked about briefly, like Ninja Chicago, Roboforce, or Prince of Persia, and it's leaving out that some of these themes were made of several sub-themes over a few years, like Alpha Team. I was not expecting to cover this many themes this quickly, if ever. And there's more to go, but I can't make a video for every theme, guys. I need to have an emotional connection to something, even if it's relatively recent, something there, some kind of passion. If I don't actually like the themes I'm talking about on some level, even ironically, I'll just be phoning it in, and the videos will be crap. So it's easy for me to get overwhelmed when I upload a new episode and a lot of the first responders are shouting, DO THIS ONE NEXT! DO THIS ONE NEXT! Sometimes even themes I've already covered. This might surprise some people, but ordering me around isn't a good way to make me want to do something. I don't like it when people bark at me to get back in the mines. If anything, it makes me hate making videos because it becomes so stressful. So stop it. Please. I'll get to most of those themes eventually, but not all of them. And it has to be when I feel like it. I need to have something substantial to say, otherwise I may as well just read directly from a Wikipedia page instead of writing my own script with my own thoughts. So please understand. And to my other older viewers, I know I've been cranking out a lot of these lately, but it won't last forever. This isn't all I'm going to be making from now on. I'll run out of cool themes to talk about sooner or later and find something else to make videos about, though probably mostly games again. And yes, I will review Sonic Mania and Forces once Mania Plus is released, making my old script for the Mania review out of date. But I have to admit, these videos have been more fun for me than the game reviews that I was never really able to make myself stand out much with. As for the future of LEGO Rewind, here's a few themes to look forward to in Season 2. Vikings, Insectoids, Arctic, Discovery, Knight's Kingdom, Space Police, Girl Themes? There are others, of course, but I gotta slow it down a bit. The last few episodes have been lightning rounds, like five themes per episode. I want to bring it down to one or two if I can, to focus on the finer details of each theme instead of burning through them all in ten minutes. These recent episodes were a special case about ongoing trends. Anyway, thanks for watching so far. And if you want to support me in any other way, please consider checking out my books. I put a lot of time into those, and they're more important to me than anything I'm doing here. And knowing me, I'll probably make another one of these seasonal reviews in another dozen episodes or so. Until next time, toodles!